Hi guys, this is another heat problem from 14. A thermos contains 150 cubic centimeters of coffee at 85 degrees Celsius. To cool the coffee, you drop in two 11 gram ice cubes. The ice cubes are originally at zero degrees Celsius and then they melt completely. What is the final temperature of the coffee? And assume the water has all the same thermal properties as water. Well, that's just silly. Assume the ice has the same thermal properties as water. Um, here's what's going on. We're do, talking about change of state, which means we go back to this graph. And we're at where this is a temperature change, and this is where we're adding heat. Now, with these ice cubes, they start at zero degrees Celsius, and all they do is melt. So there is no change in temperature, but the amount of heat that they are absorbing the quantity of heat absorbed by the ice is totally being used to melt the ice. So that's going to be the latent heat of fusion of ice times the mass of the ice cubes. So that is the heat that is going to be gained by the ice. And where is that heat going to be coming from? That is going to be lost by the coffee. So one more time, law of conservation of energy. The heat that is going to be lost uh, by the coffee is going to be equivalent to the heat that is gained by the ice. Maybe I meant to say up here, assume coffee has the same thermal properties as water. I bet that's what I meant. OK, heat lost by the coffee. Every object then has an MC delta T. Mass of the coffee, specific heat of the coffee, change in temperature of the coffee. Heat gained by the ice. In this case, there is no change in temp. It, it starts out at zero Celsius, it melts completely, and oh, what is the final temperature of the coffee plus water? Oh, yeah, because the ice cubes, after they melt, they're also then going to reach some sort of temperature. So they are going to melt plus the water that used to be ice is going to absorb some heat. So the water that used to be ice is going to warm what used to be ice. So how am I going to translate those words or ideas into an equation? So the heat of fusion is going to be the mass of the ice, the latent heat of fusion of ice, plus the mass of the ice specific heat of water, because at this point in time, it's a liquid. It's now a liquid and the change in temperature of the water. OK, now let's take a look at everything we've got, and let's put this in perspective. Mass of the coffee, 150 cubic centimeters of coffee. Well, as you probably remember, 150 cubic centimeters is equivalent to 150 milliliters. And if we're talking about something that's pretty close to water, that's 150 grams. 150 grams is 0.15 kilograms. See how smart you are? That's a lot of thinking going on there. 0.15 kilograms of coffee. Specific heat of coffee, same as the specific heat of water, 4186 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. Change in temperature is going to be, the coffee is, starts out at 85 degrees Celsius. That's the hot temperature. Remember, we want to keep this positive, and it's going to go down to a final temperature, which will be something colder. And we want to know the final temperature. That's what I'm after. The mass of the ice. Well, we've got two 11 gram ice cubes. So two times 11 grams is 22 grams. So the mass of my ice is going to be 0 0.022 kilograms. Latent heat of fusion of ice. I am going to take a moment and look that up on my pink sheet. It's pink when I give it to you in class. The coefficient of latent heat of fusion for water is 333,000 joules per kilogram, plus the mass of ice, point 0 0.022 kilograms times the specific heat of water, because up in this section, it's no longer ice, it's water, 
4186 joules per kilogram degree Celsius and multiplied by multiplied by change in temperature. All right, the water is going to have a big final temperature minus its original temperature of zero. All righty, we now have to make this simplified. That was the long equation. We're going to now make it a lot shorter and easier to fit on the screen. So let's do it. We're going to take 0 0.55, 0 0.15, excuse me, 0.15 times 4186. So this left side is going to be 628 joules per degree Celsius times 85 degrees Celsius minus T final. That's going to equal, and I'm going to multiply those two together, so 0 0.022 times 333000. So all of this is going to be, and I'm going to try and stick to three sig figs, 7330 kilograms will cancel. That's going to be joules plus, okay, I'm going to multiply those two together, 0 0.022 times 4186. This is going to be 92.1 joules per degree Celsius times T final minus zero degrees Celsius. Next distributive property, this times this, this times that. That stands alone, this times this, that times that. So here goes, 628 times 85. This is going to be 5, 3, 400 um, degrees Celsius is going to cancel. This is joules minus 628 joules degree Celsius T final equals 733 joules plus 92.1 joules per degree Celsius T final minus and minus zero. Ooh, something times zero is zero, so that's going to be zero. That's going to end up being zero. Now we have to combine like terms. So I'm going to take this, put it on that side, and I am going to put this on that side. So let's go forth and do that. I'm going to have 53,400 minus 7330. So on the left, 46,100 joules is going to equal 92.1, 92.1 T final plus 628 T final. How about 720 joules per degree Celsius T final? We're getting close. And I'm solving for T final. So T final, I'm going to divide both sides by 720. 720 joules per degree Celsius. Joules will cancel. T final, that a degree Celsius in the sum basement is going to come up. So 46,100 divided by 720. Drum roll, please. 64.0 degrees Celsius. Hot diggity dog. There you go. That is a lovely final temperature of that mixture. All right, let's do one more. That's a lot shorter. Here goes. Um, how much heat must be added to 0.45 kilograms of aluminum to change it from a solid at 130 degrees Celsius to a liquid at 660, which is its melting point? Use 4,000 joules per Kelvin for the latent heat of fusion of aluminum. All righty, whenever you have a change of state, remember, boom, 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 remember that graph, and go back to what we're talking about. Now we're going to start at a solid. So we start down here as a solid, and we are going to fully melt it. So we're going to have to have two terms. We're going to have, whenever you change its temperature, you're going to have to have an MC delta T for warming it, and then you're going to have a quantity of heat of mass times latent heat of fusion for melting it. So warming and melting. So we're going to go ahead and make that calculation. So the heat needed to warm the aluminum plus the heat needed 
to melt the aluminum, add those together, and that's going to be the total amount of heat. So the heat to warm the aluminum is going to be the mass of the aluminum, specific heat of aluminum, change in temp aluminum. To melt is going to be the mass of the aluminum times the latent heat of fusion of aluminum. Now let's take a look at what numbers we have. The mass of aluminum, 0.45 kilograms. So 0.45 kilograms. Specific heat of aluminum, if you look that up in the charts and tables, it's 900 calories per calories. I don't know. Ah, joules, sorry about that. Joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. Change in temperature, it's got to go from um, its melting temperature, 660, uh, up to that temperature from 130. So we want to keep these a positive difference, 660 degrees Celsius minus 130 plus the mass of my aluminum 0.45 kilograms and the latent heat it said use 40,000 kilogram joules per kilogram. Okay now it's pretty simple. Um, if we throw all the math together all of these Subtract, then multiply. Everything on this left-hand side, I get 214,650 joules. And the right-hand side, I get 18,000 joules. I add them together, and rounding off to three sig figs, I get 233,000 joules. Ta-da!